What's going on everybody and welcome back to Frankie's Aquatics right here on the wonderful platform that is YouTube. I hope your week's been as plentiful I hope your week has been as plentiful as mine. I tend I kind of feel like a bit like a weatherman. I've got this new dongle thing which comes with the tripod that I'm currently using. Basically it lets me connect to my phone via Bluetooth. Technology is a wonderful thing and I can obviously click it and start recording and stop recording rather than having to come over and press buttons on my phone, which is great. But I just feel like I should be like doing the weather. Like today, guess what? It's very miserable. This is England. It's always very miserable. Bit of rain here, bit of rain there, bit of rain bloody everywhere. <laughs> I just feel a bit like a weatherman. So anyway, weatherman aside, weatherman aside, I hope you've all had a fantastic week. Um, I've had a really spike in YouTube subscribers this week. So thank you all very much if you're new. And if you're one of the OGs, the original crew, thank you all so much for your continued support. This week's video is going to be something that people have requested. A few people have requested over the weeks, if not months. They want to know how I do water changes. It might seem like a very simple task, but obviously people have different ways on how to do it. So I thought today's video would be me sharing how I do my water changes with you. Still doing the weatherman thing, look. Still here. So without further ado, let's get cracking with today's video. Let's go. Come on, let's go. So before we get started, you're going to need some sort of equipment. The first thing you're absolutely going to need, will make your life a lot easier, is a siphon. Now these come in various different shapes and sizes. This is quite a good one. The rule of thumb basically is the thicker the tube, the faster the water will flow. So that's one. I use different attachments depending on what the job is at hand. And then obviously I've got a thinner one which slows the water down. I use usually so I'm just cleaning out the poop and stuff. So this one kind of comes in handy, but today, we're going to be using the thicker tube, and this is how we do it. So first things first, before we get started, the lighting is pretty poor today because it is currently half past nine in the evening. I'm filming this on a Sunday night, just in order to get my video out, as promised to you guys on the Monday morning. So there we go, that's commitment right there. <laughs> so, siphon, first and foremost, and then you're going to need a bucket. Now I have a couple of these, um, they're really handy. They basically hold quite a lot of litres of water. And I have two of them. One of them is actually designed for the car. We keep this one in the car and we basically bring our shopping in from the supermarket. So this is the one that we don't tell the wife about. We don't let the wife know I use this one. Top secret. <laughs> and let's get cracking. So we're gonna be working with Buddy and Flixel today. So obviously they're looking at me looking for some snap. Fortunately, feeding time is now over. So what we're gonna do is we're going to start siphoning out the water. Now how do we get the siphon working? There's a few ways of doing this. The one that people like to use on the YouTube is we like to kind of put a bit of water in, tilt it, keep it going and eventually the flow will go. I'm pretty old school and a little bit simple when it comes to these so I'm going to use a different technique which is called the jolly old mouth. So pop it in, put your mouth in the end of that, get the water flowing quite nicely the way you go. So once you've got the siphon in, you're going to come out about 30 to 40% of the water, depending on how bad the water actually is. And what you want to be doing now is looking for any kind of poop or leftover food, taking all that out as you go, the best you can, just to make your life a lot easier. Leftover food or uncleaned up poop will lead to ammonia spikes. Now ammonia spikes can lead to all sorts of problems so we don't want to believe any of that nasty stuff in there we want to be getting in there with a the siphon and not spilling it on the floor practically like i just nearly did and then we just want to be going around cleaning out anything as we go now for your convenience because this is going to go on for a little while i'm going to speed it up here so away we go You can also filter through the sand here, don't go too crazy because obviously axle art tools need a very, very fine sand. So if you go too, too crazy here, you'll end up sucking a lot of it back up and into your bucket, which is what we want to try and be avoiding. Otherwise it becomes an expensive little task each week. So it's going around, pulling out the water. Again, you want to be looking at about 30 to 40% of the water, maybe a little bit less if the water parameters are good. I tend to use this as my guide because obviously I've got quite poor vision. I stuck this on and I usually aim anywhere between here and here to where I stop taking out the water. Obviously make sure you don't overflow your bucket. 
I've done that more times than I care to admit if I'm honest with you. So make sure you do that and then empty your bucket when you need to. Always make sure there's nothing hiding around the filter. Because nine times out of ten, obviously the filter's doing its job. Um, I use sponge filters, so it hasn't got a hasn't got the means of actually removing the poop itself, like a canister filter would or an internal filter would. So just bear in mind if you're using the same sort of filter as I am, or even if you're not, always check around your filter because that is where the big old clumps of poop and food will probably be hiding. Very, very obvious place. And just go around gently, go nice and steady around your laptop because you don't want to weird them out, you don't want to freak them out. They will be a little bit cautious at this point anyway because you're inside their home and you're not feeding them. <laughs> so they will automatically be quite cautious as to what you're doing. I tend to find I use jars in mine and you'll see why in a little while. But um, also check inside of the jar because nine times out of ten, some of the food, or worse still, some of the poop, will find its way inside of your hides and your jars. So always make sure that you're checking those two during your water changes. See, there's a few pieces hiding away in there. Could have quite easily got unnoticed. We'll knock the jar over this way and carry on taking out all the dirt. You'll probably notice that um, my axolotls are looking at me quite curious. Yours will probably do the same. They're very curious animals are axolotls. They're very, very cute as we all know, as I'm sure we all agree. But they're also very inquisitive. They're like little water pots. They'll come over and they'll see what they're doing. Probably looking for food in all honesty. Sunday is my day where I fast all my animals. Everyone, well, all my water animals anyway, have a day off on Sunday, which is what today is. And as you can see, I'm nearly at the markers where I'll stop. So that would, what, that take me 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the tops? I mean, we did speed the video up. It doesn't take a lifetime. And I do this each and every week. On all my axolotl tanks, I take out a good 20 to 30, maybe 40% of the water. I'll also go around in a moment with a sponge take off any build up, whether it be algae, just slime coats, whatever it might be. I'll clean all the tops around here. I don't tend to worry about the back wall so much because algae in, in, its, in general isn't that harmful to one. It's not harmful to the animals at all. It's purely ugly for us keepers. So as you can see, hello little man. I don't, I don't worry too much about the, the, um, the sides so much, the back I don't worry about at all. It's just the front, it's just the front glass. Because obviously that's where we see in and check on our animals. So I use one of these, nice little sponge on a stick. Um, remove the, the scratchy pad to begin with. I think it's a little bit too, a little bit too tough. And then I just go around really carefully and just remove any buildup of grime or anything else that I might see. I'm just looking to remove anything that's really obvious. Now this is obviously a little bit tricky for me because if you're a long time subscriber, You'll probably know I have visual issues um, if you're new here. Um, I'm pretty much blind in my left eye. I can see nothing, which is quite strange, but it happened a couple of years ago, and I've adapted to it fairly well, I suppose, considering, especially within my hobby. And what I'm doing here is I'm just looking. I'm using the sponge as my guide, and I'm just seeing wherever I go over. If it looks dirty or built up, and obviously that's where the dirt is hiding. I don't worry too much about the decor. Very simple anyway, axolotl tanks. This one's just got two exo terra hides in there, a jar and some fake plants in the back. So now I've done that, what I'll do is I'll show you how I fill it back up. So now the water's out, this is where we have to fill it back up. First and foremost, you're gonna to want to treat the water with a conditioner. 
This is the one that I use. This is no product placement, not a sponsored video or anything like that, but this is the one that I've just started using recently. Pretty much, water conditions are all pretty much the same. This is obviously a bigger bottle than probably what many of you might have, because obviously I've got quite a lot of tanks to contend with. And this is a nice, easy pump. So basically I go over and it's one squirt. That's more than enough to cover that tank of what I've taken out. So that's the product I use. And then this is where my life gets even easier. Remember me telling you about that jar? This is why I use the jar. So if I was to go in there now and start filling water up, the sand is gonna go everywhere, the axe are gonna start freaking out, it's gonna be absolute havoc inside of there. So what I do is I use my brain and I stand this jar up. First and foremost, I get inside of this tank. And I stand this up and I kind of squidge it back into the sand like that. Now, why am I doing that? Anyone guessed? I use directly from my hose fresh water, nice cold fresh water. And um, I've tested, tested the water, the water's perfectly safe, so I know it's perfectly safe to use straight in my aquariums. And then it's just a case of popping the nozzle inside of the jar and squeezing. Now that causes a lot less disruption to the water. The axe bottles are happy. The water isn't being smashed about the tank, causing all sorts of panic between the axe bottles. And it makes everybody's life a lot easier. Does it get a bit boring now then? So we'll speed it up. <laughs> So I do water changes each and every week, even if the waters are great, I still can change a percentage of the water. That's how I keep my water crystal clear, perfectly well balanced, and that's a lot to very happy. It helps with temperature control, because obviously I'm putting cold water back in, so that also helps with that, especially in the hotter months. Obviously I run more water changes when it's hot. There is videos on that actually. Um, and this is just an easy way of how I do things. I know some people test the water first to make sure or see if it actually needs a water change. I tend to change it regardless, because the way I see it, fresh, clean water can really do no harm to your animals, especially your axolotls are very sensitive to ammonia, nitrates and nitrite spikes, they're quite temperamental when it comes to those, so if you do want to test and there's anything that's off balance, just always do a small water change, it's the best thing you can do for your axolotls. And as you can see, it causes a lot less destruction as well. Before, I used to put my hose in a bag. Um, and let the water kind of like almost waterfall back into the tank. That seemed to work, but it still causes a little bit of disruption. So I tend to find, if I put the glass jar in there, the glass jar isn't just there for this purpose, they do love glass jars. But when people ask me, what can I give my axolotls that I haven't already? I always say, have you ever thought of an empty glass jar? Because weirdly, they just really like them. I mean, they don't work very much as good as a hide for them, but they just love sitting inside of them. And when they're really tiny, you can also feed them in it. So any bloodworm, or any kind of pellets or anything, you won't find them all scattered all over your tank because they will be, well, most of the time, unless they kick them all out everywhere, they, they will be self saying, safely concealed inside of the jar. So when I'm filling, I go to the top of this line and I give a little bit more, because obviously I'm gonna be putting little bits of water out here and there as and when I see poop and food that hasn't been eaten. So you always give just a tiny bit more ready in for any kind of cleanage that I might need to do during the week. It's best to spot clean. Whenever I look in my tanks, if I see any kind of poops, any uneaten food or anything that looks a little bit funky, I get in there with a turkey baster and I just scoop it out. It's really easy, really easy to maintain and it helps keep my waters on point as well. As we can see, we've reached the mark of where we were in the first place. I tend to give like a, thing, a fingerprint full on top of that and when it just peeks over the top, jobs are good in. Jobs are good in, I'm happy with that. Yeah, that was great, Dad, but where's my food? Lovely speech and all that, Dad. Yes, YouTube will love it, but where's my food? The face of foodiness. On the back end of this video, I just wanted to reach out and say a massive thank you to everybody who spent the time commenting and messaging and emailing me from last week's video. I was obviously in a little bit of a dilemma in regards to what to do and how to sell my axolotls. I haven't relisted on eBay, I haven't. I mean, I did momentarily, but I decided to take them back off because thankfully, most of my babies are kind of pre-ordered, ready for the new homes. People are expecting them. People showed interest literally as soon as I sold the last spawn. So people were straight on this one. So there's gonna be a lot of babies that are gonna be going to the new homes without the need of things like PayPal and without the need of things like eBay, which is a blessing, an absolute blessing. 
There were some really good comments of people giving me sound advice on what other platforms to probably try out and check out and use, which believe me, I'm going to be investigating them all very thoroughly. So thank you all very much for your continued support and your help. You have no idea how much those comments actually help. So thank you. From nice comments to the constructive comments and everything in between, the likes, the comments, the subscriptions, mean an awful lot. So thank you very, very much. Now, if you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like button. It just lets me know that you enjoy the content I'm producing. Also hit the subscribe button and then ring that little bell thing because that little bell will basically notify you as and when I upload, which at the moment is once a week, every, every Monday. <laughs> which at the moment is every Monday at one o'clock UK time. So thank you all so much for your continued support and until next time, ta-ta for now. Woo! So what do you think of that then, eh? You got to see a bit of leg there, didn't you? Bit of leg, first thing in the morning, not too shabby, eh?